Hey guys, let's get more news from Dallas Cowboys, but first don't forget to subscribe to the channel and leave your like. Gobsmacked. Bombshell Cowboys rumor on Dak. Much of the offseason has been dominated by everyone trying to decipher exactly what Dallas Cowboys owner Jerry Jones meant by being all in. Is it to go out and acquire big-name free agents and kick the salary cap can down the road to 2027? Or is it to sign up the star players who require a new contract like Dak Prescott? As it turns out, it might be neither. NFL Network's Rich Eisen was at the scouting combine all week, had his ear to the ground and upon his return, had quite the rumor list at his disposal. Now, Eisen is a well-respected personality in the industry and has been for decades so we don't take this with a grain of salt. Eisen has revealed some of the chatter heard at Indianapolis during the scouting combine and it has something to do with Prescott's contract situation and Cowboys Nation, you're going to want to sit down for this. The rumor I heard from multiple people at the combine is his, Jerry Jones, definition of all-in is to make Dak play out his walk year and not extend him at all and just eat the cap hit, Eisen said on the Rich Eisen show. This is what he means by all-in. He means, hey Dak, you haven't won a playoff game except you know a couple around here, last year was so dreadful, I'm going to make you play it out, and I'll eat the 59 near 60 million bucks. If you do what I hope you do, win a Super Bowl, hold me over a barrel because you think he's going to take less than 59 million bucks to stay put? I was just gobsmacked when I heard that. Now, CowboysSI.com has already detailed the three options at Dallas' disposal when it comes to figuring out what to do with Prescott's contract, and not extending him and severely limiting what the team can do in terms of roster building wasn't thought to be a serious consideration. Well, according to Eisen, it's more than a consideration, it might be the avenue that Jerry might be going down. Now this contradicts Dak's words at a children's cancer fund event on Monday, as the quarterback said he was confident a deal would get done. So the sticky offseason that the Cowboys have had already with the news that Tyron Smith is set to walk out the door to free agency, and now Eisen's rumor and for now we will call it just that, but things are exactly going smoothly for a franchise facing a seriously pressurized offseason. With the Cowboys needing to be cap compliant by March 13, the beginning of the new league year, we will not have to wait to find out exactly what Jerry meant by all in. But by not extending DAC or using the Band-Aid method and seriously limiting the team's ability to add quality to a roster many deem Super Bowl caliber by swallowing Prescott's monster cap hit for 2024 doesn't scream all in does it? Prescott's contract situation and future just got a whole lot more interesting. What the Cowboys' offensive line could look like without Tyron Smith while much of the focus this past weekend was centered around the NFL Combine and all of the draft-eligible players hoping to boost their draft stock with strong athletic tests, teams all around the league also used the event as an opportunity to meet with agents and discuss players with expiring contracts. Such was the case for the Cowboys, who met with Tyron Smith's representation during the Combine. Initially, there were reports of optimism from Dallas, and the expectation that the team would be able to bring Smith back for the 2024 season. Then, Saturday morning brought news that Smith is expected to test free agency and likely land somewhere other than Dallas. Smith has played all 13 seasons in Dallas and has almost universally been recognized as one of the best defensive linemen in the league when healthy. However, health has been a consistent issue for him, as Smith has missed at least three games each of the last eight seasons. Since Mike McCarthy became the head coach, Smith has appeared in just 30 of 67 possible regular season games. It's unclear if the inconsistent availability played a role in this potential exit, but the Cowboys took a step towards planning for this moment two years ago when they drafted Tyler Smith in the first round. At the time, the Cowboys were very clear that they saw the younger Smith as the future left tackle and that future came quicker than anticipated when the veteran Smith missed the first 13 games of the year. However, the Cowboys spent this past season with Tyler Smith playing exclusively at left guard, even when Tyron Smith missed some time at left tackle, which has prompted the question of what exactly this line would look like without number 77 in there. In looking at the roster as it currently stands, Dallas has some options, this one makes the most sense, and is probably the most likely outcome. The Cowboys drafted Tyler Smith for exactly this reason, after all. 
Smith produced at an elite level at left guard this past year, but he also performed admirably at left tackle as his rookie season went along. It should also be considered that left tackles are usually harder to find than left guards. If the Cowboys like what they have in Smith, regardless of his position, they're going to have an easier time finding a new starter at guard. TJ Bass, for instance, played at left guard in four games this past season, including two starts, and the team is reportedly very high on his future potential. Outside of base, there are several free agent guards that likely fit into the Cowboys' price range that they could target. Lakin Tomlinson, Anders Peet, Dalton Reisner, and David Edwards all have ample experience as starters at left guard, as does former Cowboy Connor Williams, who has played center, another area of need in Dallas, for the Dolphins the last two years. If the Cowboys do opt to keep Smith at left guard, they will have a dire need for a new left tackle. Outside of Tyron Smith, only two other Cowboys players took snaps at left tackle this past year, Chuma Adoga and rookie Asim Richards. Adoga's play was uneven all season, and he's also a pending free agent. Meanwhile, Richards played a total of 39 offensive snaps all year, with 27 of those coming at left tackle. The young, raw player likely isn't the answer to any question in 2024. The options in free agency are incredibly minimal as of now, which is why Tyron Smith would likely command a large market, despite his age and health. If the Cowboys find themselves looking for a new left tackle, the draft would likely be their best bet. This year's draft class is loaded at the tackle spot, though it seems likely that the top left tackle options would come off the board before the Cowboys are on the clock. Duke's Graham Barton, Washington's Troy Fatanu, and Arizona's Jordan Morgan could be potential targets at 24th overall, but whether or not those players are ready to be day one starters for a team in win-now mode will be a point of debate. Remember last year, around this time, when it was floated that the Cowboys were considering the possibility of moving Terrence Steele to left guard? The idea generated plenty of debate at the time, but Steele's recovery timeline from a torn ACL ultimately kept the team from ever seriously exploring that option. However, they could go back to it now. If the Cowboys move Tyler Smith out to tackle, they could look to move Steele inside next to him and shift their attention to finding a new right tackle. After all, Steele struggled mightily in pass protection this past year, and it's always been an area of weakness for him. The Cowboys also have Matt Willetsko, who missed most of last year with an injury but has worked exclusively at right tackle in training camp and the preseason. Cowboys reportedly don't want Dak Prescott to reset QB market. The Dallas Cowboys and quarterback Dak Prescott aren't seeing eye-to-eye -eye on a contract extension. There's no question that Dallas wants Prescott to remain its franchise quarterback, wrote John Machota of The Athletic. But the team would prefer to get a deal done that doesn't reset the QB market. Prescott, who is entering the final year of a four-year, $160 million deal, reportedly wants a contract worth $60 million per year, making him the highest-paid player in the NFL. This would be an overpay. Per Spotrac, his market value is a four-year deal worth $50.8 million annually. The problem for the Cowboys is Prescott has an upper hand in contract negotiations. His deal has a no-trade and no-tag clause. Extending the three-time Pro Bowler saves $26.2 million in cap room. Dallas could use this to give wide receiver C.D. Lamb and linebacker Micah Parsons new contracts. According to OTC, Dallas is $10.6 million over the cap. The Cowboys can use one of the void years, 2025 and 2026, on Prescott's contract to save $18.5 million, but that decision would carry risk. The 30-year-old, who finished second in MVP voting last season, will attract suitors if he becomes a free agent in 2025. We don't need to, but we can if everybody wants to solve it, Cowboys owner Jerry Jones recently said of a new deal, via Machota. If you can't, what we have in place works. And so obviously, if you do it one way, then that gives you, you'll be working through some of the other areas on the team in a different way but you can't really plan on that until you see where you are there. That's what we're doing. Jones and company should be more proactive, however. Dallas has the 24th overall pick in the draft,
meaning it's not in a position to find a replacement. Spotrack founder Michael Giannitti suggested that the Cowboys offer Prescott a three-year, $175 million deal with the largest signing bonus in league history. This might be the best option for both parties. The QB would get his desired salary, and a shorter contract incentivizes him to win his first Super Bowl before he exits his prime. And you fan, what do you think of the Dak Prescott situation? Leave your opinion in the comments.